to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling. Do you believe you are capable of choosing your future? Sometimes it takes just one person to believe in you, or you to believe in yourself. If you find yourself continuing to say, someday I will take better care of myself, only to continue living the same day over and over and over again, then you, my friend, are in the right place. I am your biggest cheerleader, inspiring you to become you, on purpose and with intention. Are you ready to create a life you love? I'm excited to share with you some big ideas that you can use today to inspire, impact, and influence your life and everyone in it. The Becoming You Show starts now. Hello, how are you? Can you believe that we are more than halfway through August? I I can't. I just recently got my kiddos their school supplies. And I'm going to be honest, when I got the school supply for the lists and they said that 10th graders need not get any supplies, I was devastated. Now, I love school supply shopping, my boys so much, but they kind of go with the flow and they're super great sports about it. But I keep thinking, how is it possible that I have an almost 16 year old? that will be a sophomore and who doesn't need school supplies. Hmm. Anyway, but the summer flew for us. Um, Our family is ready to start a brand new season of school and sports and new commitments and obligations. And I'm really excited to see what this new season will bring for me and for you. So thanks for being with me uh, today. I want to talk with you about what is stopping you. I think if you're listening to this, you are a bit of a freedom seeker, right? You want health and you want amazing relationships and you want to live in purpose and you want to develop good habits and good routines and have abundant energy and do all the things. And you want time as well. And I was thinking about this as I coach amazing people who want the same. I find when we take a look at their life, they are either making significant strides in one area of their life, but perhaps are neglecting others, or they're just kind of comfortable in all areas, but not necessarily progressing in any, and they feel restless. Or other times they just kind of feel stuck and frustrated. So I thought I would address some ideas on what I believe is stopping us from progressing. And wherever you are, whether you feel stuck in every area of your life, or if you just want a bit of a tune-up, I hope that some of these ideas will help you start. I think for starters, before we do anything, we need to get clarification on what we want, why we want it, and who we need to become to get it. Think about it. If you were going to drive to a new place, you would need a map, right? You would want to know where you were going and how to get there. Now I get it. Some people like to just jump in the car and see where it takes them. And that's great. And it's spontaneous. And yes, (laughs) you will get somewhere. But this is not the progress I'm talking about today. Today, I'm talking about the progress of getting you exactly what you want. So we need to know what it is. Think about where you are right now in your life. What would progress look like to you? Would it be to have more time for self-care so that you could work out more, have time to meal prep, maybe take a longer walk, meditate? You could get more sleep. You could have more downtime to read, think, create, more quality connections. Would it mean you could start Or continue writing that book, completing that task, landing that deal? Would it mean to maybe start some new habits, stop some old habits? Would it mean to work less so that you can travel and enjoy more? Would it mean to outsource some low value tasks so that you have more time to work on the high value tasks that matter? Would it mean to maybe have those difficult conversations to forgive? to create and build a new tribe of friends and connections that will challenge you to grow. What does it look like for you? What new results do you want to create in your life yet this year? What new results 
do you want to create in your home, in your relationships, in your work? Until we know what it is, it is really hard to start. When we don't know where we're going, we make a lot of wrong turns. We go right, left, north, south, who knows? We need to know because when we know what we want, then we go to work on the questions that really matter. Like, what would I have to think and believe about myself to start that thing? Who would I have to be in order to do that thing? What would I need to start, stop, and or continue to do in order to get the results that I want? So yes, the infamous who, what, when, where, and how. These are the questions of clarity, my friends. Who? Who would I have to be? What? What do I have to do? When? When would I like to start? Where? Where are we going? What results are we going for? And how? How can I make it fun and simple? Once we know the who, what, when, and how, it is super easy for our brain to start. Our brains like answers. It likes certainty. So let's stop spinning in the uncertainty of, of we don't know how. We don't know when we should. The doubt in what other people might think if we do this thing. So many times we don't do that thing we want to do. I've been thinking about doing but don't even consider because of what other people might think. Thoughts like, why would she quit her corporate job to be a coach? Who does that? Yeah, that was one of my thoughts. Why would she even try to eat healthier now? She's already tried it so many times in the past, albeit unsuccessfully. Why even bother to work out? I'm just too busy to be consistent at it. Why even reach out to that friend? I'm sure she's as busy as I am. So we don't even try. We don't even start. So whether or not you are borrowing thoughts of others to create doubt and fear for yourself, or you are offering them to yourself, can you minimize that negative thought loop with the certainty of who you are and where you want to go? Okay? So now that we know who we are and where we want to go, and we have quieted the inner voices that tell us why we can't or why we shouldn't, we need a plan, a plan. We need to know what to do. Now, I know we get caught up in on this one, my friends. I hear all the time, I just don't know what to do. And it's because you are not clear on who you are. That is why we have to start there. Don't forget that first step. When you know who you are, you know what to do. We want to be confused by what to do. And I'm going to land some hard love on you, it's not what to do. It's not. Anything that you want to do most likely has been done. You are a Google search away from knowing what and how to do most everything. You want to lose weight? Tons of books and podcasts and courses on the subject. It's not the weight that's the problem. It's the belief about the weight that stops you. You want to get better sleep? Same. It's the belief about the sleep that stops you. What if you could just believe that whatever amount of sleep you got was the perfect amount of sleep? You want better relationships? Tons of books and courses there on this as well. Better relationships, P.S. Start with the belief in yourself. But regardless of the results that you want, there is a plan. Go get it. Read about it. Take a course. Watch a video. Listen to a podcast. Skill up so that you have the confidence, the know-how to be the person that does the thing that gets the results that you want. Your success is inevitable if you don't quit. So if you have been struggling to get the results that you've wanted in your life and you have stopped for whatever reason, maybe you thought it wasn't available for you or that it doesn't happen for people like you or that you don't have the time or it's the wrong time. I want you to Ask yourself and consider, what if you were wrong? What if it is available? What if it does happen for people like you? What if you do have the time and right now is the time? What if it is possible? Just what if? I want you to ask yourself, what would be that next step? What would it be? What tiny step would you have to take next to start? Can you commit to that next step today? Okay, so now that we know the who, what, where, and why, and we have a plan, we need to commit to doing it. And we make this commitment, this commitment piece 
so heavy and unfun. No wonder we struggle with commitment. So we're lightening it up and we're making it fun. I think the reason we do this is because we try to overpromise. We do this all the time to ourselves, you guys. We suggest that we're never going to eat sugar again or that we're going to work out seven days a week for an hour or, or no more alcohol or no more fill in the blanks. And we make these hard rules for ourselves to follow. And then we get mad at ourselves for not following through. So let's over deliver and under promise. So what can you commit to that is easy, a no brainer? Maybe, maybe if you haven't been working out at all, maybe you start with three days a week for 10 minutes. Maybe if you haven't been eating the greatest, maybe instead of eating ice cream out of a container, you put it in a bowl. Or for that matter, what if you committed to instead of saying no more sugar, no more treats, that you just said, I can eat anything that I want, but I can't eat it out of a box or a bag or a container? What if you made yourself have to eat like a lady and actually put your food in a bowl or on a plate? Maybe if you haven't made progress on a project, can you break that project down into tiny little tasks and then allocate those tasks to blocks in your calendar? I want you to be honest. When you think about what you have to do, does it seem feasible or does it seem hard? If it seems too hard, you most likely are not going to want to start it. And I'm all for doing hard things, but you have to get some momentum but yet our brains will offer that won't work, that won't help, that won't be enough to make a difference. And so we don't even start. I want you to remind yourself when your brain offers you that, that small, consistent momentum is the way to huge, sustainable progress. And one more last thing before I talk about this last idea. How can you make it fun? Can you bring some joy, some newness to the mundane in your tasks? Can you ask someone to support you, hold you accountable, do it with you? Can you add some music or candles or oils or lighting? Can you add a challenge to it by putting a time on it or, or seeing how much you can get done before that next commitment on your calendar? Can you track your progress by way of a habit tracker or a planner? There are just certain things, my friends, that should not be left to the randomness of our brain to decide. Our primitive brain is going to want the here and now, that dopamine hit of what we want right now or, or what we don't want to do right now. You need to direct that brain of yours and make more decisions using the prefrontal cortex, which is the debate part of your brain. You need to debate the benefit of that quick hit, that over shopping, over drinking, overeating, that over purging on Netflix to the benefit of the long-term accomplishment and success. I promise you, there's a dopamine hit waiting for you then. Our brains do not like to delay gratification, but that is a conditioned thing. So that means it can be reprogrammed to the extent to which you can get good at delayed gratification, I believe is the extent to which you will be successful and make all the progress towards your goal. I truly believe this. Okay, so now that we know the who, what, when, where, and why, and we have a plan, and we're going to make it fun, and not too hard, and remember that simple, consistent action is better than big action occasionally, the only thing left is to map out the plan. We need to account for it somewhere, whether it is a sheet of paper or a planning software or a, a planner, we need to block out time to accomplish our progress. I want you to be honest with yourself. I want you to think about what you have stopped making progress on. Maybe it's your workouts, your nutrition, better sleep, that book, that course, finishing up the house project, committing to making a better effort to get with friends, whatever it is. If I were, look, if I were to look in your planner, but I find it planned anywhere. And again, no judgment. But if not, that might be a pretty good reason as to why it's not getting done. We need to look at our goals. It's not that we have forgotten them. It's not that we've lost our motivation. It's that we've stopped looking at them. And we need to plan our progress. If left to the randomness of what's easy and comfortable in the now, 
We give ourselves some now wins, yeah, but there are no wins for our future. And I get it. All seemingly simple things, right? But progress can be simple. So often, though, we forget the steps. We think that they don't matter. We think it's a motivation issue when it's just not. When you want to make progress on whatever it is, it is easy to skip that first step. I get it. It's super exciting just to jump right in on a new goal or a habit, but take it from me. It will be temporary because the minute you don't feel like it, you will revert back to your old ways. That is why you have to establish new ways, new thoughts, new feelings, new identities. You have to spend some time working on clarifying and practicing your becoming, that new version of you that is capable of achieving the goal, making the progress, that new version of you that is committed to taking small, consistent action towards your goal, that new version of you that will no longer tolerate the randomness of days and the excuses that it is not possible for you because you now know better. This new version of you is the way to your goals and your progress and your hopes and your dreams. This new version of you is created and chosen by you for you. Finding you, determining who you want to be, determining how to make your future you proud is the work. The rest, the plan, the scheduling, the implementing, huh, that's the easy part. And if you want to do this work, this is the work that we do in our online community, Becoming. We're also going to be doing a deep dive into this in an upcoming mastermind that I'm super excited about. I've been working on, on frameworks and strategies for this mastermind for, gosh, eight months, nine months now. My hope in the mastermind is that I can find each and every one of you two more hours in your day which would equate to almost a month more in your year so that you can spend it in alignment with who it is that you are. So part of this mastermind is gonna get real clear on your identity, not just who you are right now, but who you want to become. And from there, we're gonna navigate all of the areas of clutter that are stealing your time and your money and your energy and your joy and I know this because it stole mine. I was an absolute cluttered mess. Here's how. Mental clutter. My inner critic was so mean and so awful and so hurtful. My inner critic stopped me from making progress on my goals because I was in comparison and I was in judgment of self because I didn't think that it was possible for me. Emotional clutter, yep, had that too. No processing for this person. Only reacting and repressing. It wasn't much of a reveler because I didn't really indulge because I was fine when I actually wasn't. Behavioral clutter, we're cleaning that up in the mastermind. No way my habits were supporting the best version of me. I ran to not feel. I spent money to not feel. And trust me, it wasn't money to invest in myself. It was money to escape myself, thinking that that next new thing would make me happy, as if that was the goal. Relational clutter? Huh? Oh man, I needed a lot of decluttering help there. I was of the philosophy that if people didn't like me, that I was unlikable, <laughs> but I didn't really like me. So what to do with all of that? What to do with all of that? When I don't like me, how can I expect other people to? When I pretend and I people please, that's not me being authentic. That's me showing up as everyone else would like me to show up. Temporal clutter, so much time doubting my career, my decisions, second guessing everything because I didn't trust me. I didn't listen to me. And so the doubt turned into delay, which ultimately turned into self-loathing. We're not honoring and excusing, offering up thoughts like, I just have too much going on, or what would people think 
if I did this, posted that, said that, launched that course, wrote that book. Physical clutter, so many bags of clothes. Barely worn, shoes, purses, jewelry, hats, scarves, pens, organizational bins, baskets, and containers to store all of the stuff. <laughs> that is why the in uh, organizational industry is a billion dollar market. But here's the thing. Being organized is way, way, way more easy when you have less to organize. And the last area of clutter that we're going to break down in the mastermind is career clutter. By not aligning with my life audit, spending too much time working as a technician in my business and not a founder, not an entrepreneur, not taking days off, not taking vacations because I was trading time for money. I was cluttered in every single area that you could be cluttered. And while I hope and pray that you aren't, <laughs> is there an area that you want to clear? What would it mean to your life, your time, your energy? What would it mean to clear up some behaviors, some habits in your life? What, what would it mean for you to clean up some of the relationships, some of the toxic relationships that you have in your life? What would it mean for you if you had more time? What would it mean for you if you cleared up some of the physical clutter that energetically steals your flow? We're clearing all of these clutters in the upcoming October Mastermind. So if you're interested, head over to my website, www leahrolling.com and you can get on the wait list. I would love to have you in there doing this work, finding our sense of self, <laughs> discovering who it is that we are underneath all of the clutter. I truly believe that our best life, the one that we want, is buried underneath everything that we don't want. Okay, my friends, I want you to make progress on your goals and your dreams. First thing first, can you give yourself five minutes to just sit and journal on who you would have to be, what you would have to feel, what next action you would have to take to make some progress today? Can you take it? Give your future you a win today. I promise you, your future you will thank you. Have an amazing one. I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling, where I share big ideas to inspire, impact, and influence your life. Tune in every Friday at 11 Central on TransformationTalkRadio.com for your morning cup of coffee, the hug you never want to end, and that inspirational message that you felt was written just for you. Each show is inspiring you to become you with purpose and intention. For more information or to connect with me, visit www.LeahRowling.com.